Hey guys, my name's Kat. I'm Tamri. And I'm Sarah. And we will speak about Louis and Yamanaka. Remember to follow along throughout this video. Louis Ann Yamanaka was born on September 7th, 1961, making her six, 56 years old. She was originally born and raised in Ho'olehua Molokai. Lois Ann is the wife of John and Ferrara and the mother of John John. According to our reading, Saturday night at the Pahala Theater, Lois is living in Kalihi Valley, Honolulu, with her five poodles, one blind cocker spaniel, and her four cats. Throughout her career, she attended UH Manoa, earning a bachelor's degree in education in 1983, and then went to complete her master's program with education in 1987. Lois Ann Yamanaka is a language arts and English teacher within the Hawaii State Department of Education, or also known as the DOE of Hawaii. She is also the director of the La'au Learning Center that was founded with Melvin Spencer III, back in 1987. We will speak more about this topic later in this video. She has a passion for writing about who she is and the culture that she represents, both Japanese and American. Miss Yamanaka won many awards and grants. To name some of the grants that she received are the National Endowment for the Humanities Grant in 1990, in 1994, the Carnegie Foundation Grant, and the National Endowment for the Arts. Some of the accolades that she won for her literary works are, in 1993, Pushcart Prize for Poetry with her work Saturday Night at the Pahala Theater. In 1994, Pushcart Prize for Literature. In 1996, Rana Jaff Award for Woman Writer. In 1998, Asian American Literary Award for Saturday Night at the Pahala Theater. And Lanan Literary, literary Award for Fiction. Lois Ann Yamanaka was the co-founder of Na'au Learning Center along with Melvin Spencer III. A little background on Melvin, he has taught leadership development and English for eight years through Hawaii DOE, retired in 2016 as a tenor, tenored faculty with the University of Hawaii at Manoa College of Education. During this time, he worked as a director of the Office of, Hawaii, of Student Academic Services. Yamanaka and Spencer thought of this idea for this program while being undergrads at Manoa. They derived the name Na'au from the English translation meaning gut or key center. The purpose for this program was to enhance writing and teach it as art, and also to teach the idea that everyone should treat people they'd like, the way they'd like to be treated. This program serves students between ages pre-K to grade 12, focusing in all subject areas. The program also strives to teach school readiness programs like, t like test taking strategies, writing skills, beginning learners, kindergarten test programs, like temporary students to get into Kamehameha schools, and ISEE SSAT test preps. They also offer basic life and workplace readiness skills such as interviewing skills, resume writing, and communication skills. The, pro the photos provided on this slide Top left is Lois Ann Yamanaka and Melvin Spencer III. Top right is a screenshot of what the website looks like, and you can find out more information about this program at www.ma'alearningcenter.com. And the two photos below were provided from their website. Here are some of her works. One of them is a book that we are reading in class. It is called Saturday Night at the Pahala Theater, which is a compilation of short poems that was published in 1993. The novels that she wrote are Wild Meat and the Bully Burgers, Blues Hangin' and Heads by Harry, which focuses on sexual and gender identity. Other works that she has written are Father of the Four Passages, Behold the Many, Name Me Nobody, and The Heart's Language. In total, the amount of books that has been published are eight. We will be taking, talking more of her stories from the Saturday Night at the Pahala Theater. Please pick up your book and follow along. So I did the first section of this book, which all of the stories were named Kala. The pages were between 15 and 27. Um, within this reading, the writing styles were Hawaiian Pigeon and Dialogue. Um, the stories were based off of, a, off of specific parts between the main character's life, which have also noted as a plot. Um, I never really got to know the main character's name. Um, I'll share more about the stories later. The themes and issues that occurred during these readings were violence, sexual acts, masculine control, feminine abuse, and being under the influence. 
Each story showcases one or more of these themes or issues. Um, now, focusing on the stories, there are five stories total or color series. Gave me any kind of advi advice, especially about Filipinos when I moved to Pahala, sitting on our bikes by the Catholic Church, captain of the volleyball team, Saturday night at the Pahala Theater, and grad party. Gave me any kind of advice, especially about the Filipinos when I moved to Pahalo. It was a story about when the main character had first moved into the neighborhood and Kala had given her advice on what to do and what not to do for certain consequences. Most of the um, stories and consequences kind of seemed like myths and I was familiar with a few. Um, the characters in this story were the main character, Kala, and a few locals around town. Their names were brought up through examples made by Kala. Sitting on our bikes by the Catholic Church seemed like it was a typical conversation between two friends about puberty. The next story was on Kala, was the captain of the volleyball team. Here we were first introduced to Jimmy Boy. The first story, the story consisted of our main character, Jimmy Boy, Mr. Shimayama, and the protagonist's uncle, who I'm assuming she lives with. Saturday night at the Pahala Theater consisted of our main character, Nancy's mom, Jimmy's friend, Muggs, Jimmy boy, old man, and the character from the movie. This story is about the protagonist's experience during her first Lady R movie. Um, the last story um, within Kala was listed as grad party. The main characters were our main character, Jimmy boy, and uncle during Jimmy boy's graduation party celebration. In this slide, in the literary work that we are reading for class Saturday night at the Pahala Theater, another compilation of short stories from pages 28 to 43 is called Tita. This short story focuses on three major themes and ideas. They are discrimination, trust, and sexism. Many people are discriminated by the way they look, the way they sound, the culture they come from, the race they are, or even by the size of their body. In this series, Tita, each of the five parts mention a discriminatory type. In Tita Bathroom, she describes the race that she is discriminated by and how she is distinguished by what her outer appearance looks like. Also, in this part, there is some sort of dominance and power that is mentioned. In Tita Jap, she is discriminated by ethnic identity, Papa, which means half. She is half Japanese and half American. Tita on fat talks about the discrimination of body size and how her body figure is not the ideal woman according to American standards. In Tita Boyfriend, she speaks about sexism, how there is a certain type of woman that is ready to have a significant other, at the same time being discriminated by appearance. The last of the Tita series is Tita User. In this part, Vulgar language is used by, because Tita is being accused of doing things she did not do. Trust issues that arise between people may or may not lead to an outburst of words that should not be said. I believe that trust issues is one of the main themes in this part of the series. I enjoyed every part of this series because it spoke about discrimination in ways that I would not think about. I realized that Things that Lois and Yamanaka wrote in this five-part series of Tita dealt with the struggle of social and personal identity. The last mini-series in part one is called Girly. They're comprised of three short stories of three different encounters found in page 44 to 48. The main character is portrayed as a child who is either in her early or late teens. The major themes that are found in this mini-series are pride, being pono or being righteous, and sexual indecencies. The first story is called Girly After School, Monday After School. The characters only comprise of Girly and Boy. Girly talks about a fight she witnessed that involves Boy and the unbelievable things that happen in the fight. In Girly and Faso Face the Music, Girly and Faso go through a regrettable decision and, now, and is now faced to do what is pono or what is righteous. And lastly, in the three-part series, Girly and Asi Friends Forever, Girly and Asi, or actually Girly, explains a traumatic experience that changes how she views her friend Asi. 
So this is our works cited page and thanks for paying attention and be sure to do your peer critique survey at the end of this video and have a good one.